One thing is clear. What happened yesterday at our nation's capital was nothing like we've seen before. As a historian, we always look for precedents, and I can certainly say that there's no precedent quite like what we're seeing right now. Bill Convery, director of research at the Minnesota Historical Society, says the last time a mob stormed the Capitol was during the War of 1812. And back then, it wasn't Americans doing it. You know, these are times that are really off the charts. And as a historian, but also as an American, I'm really uh, hoping for the best and, and, and hoping that we can get through these uh, troubled times. What is it like these days when the primary source is as simple as a tweet somebody had just fired off in a split second? Yeah, we simultaneously live in a more literate and more ephemeral society than we ever have in the past. And there's so much information out there, but uh, you know, only a percentage of it is being preserved. Uh, it's going to make for some really interesting reconstruction by future historians. The phrase history repeats itself. Well, Convery says we cannot take that lightly. We have certainly seen examples of extremism and mob violence and conspiracy theories and the kinds of insecurity that lead to the, these kinds of actions in the past. And, you know, there's a lot there for us to consider as we look to the future. But we always have to be careful about the past because any past we have is an interpretation and it can be a very poor predictor of the future. A colleague of mine likes to say that historians predicting the future is malpractice. But the images and videos have made it around the world in no time. There's no taking any of those back. We've always been a shining light of democracy for other countries despite our flaws. But this, you know, this, this is a, a pretty huge blow for America's reputation as a beacon of democracy. As for what this will look like in the history books, Convery stuck to what he had said before, that predicting the future just isn't a part of his job. I'm not quite sure that I can say how future historians are going to interpret this because we don't really know how it's going to play out yet. We're still living through these times and I don't think we have the perspective yet to understand what lessons there are to learn. Um, so, it, you know, it's really difficult for me to say how people will view this in the future because we haven't lived through the entire event yet. Bill also told me that it's also not necessarily a historian's job to analyze what had happened in history and then distill like a neat lesson that we can all take away from. But he did emphasize that it is very important that we make sure this is not forgotten or erased because as ugly as it is, it's now a part of America's historical fabric. Yeah, absolutely true. Sharon, you said something this morning about having a personal conversation with your family who about what's going on in the United States. And your mom had a pretty interesting take. Would you mind sharing that? Yeah, absolutely. So I was really heartbroken and I was telling my family, uh, they live in Singapore, uh, about all of this stuff that was going down. And my mom said, sweetie, this kind of stuff happens in other countries all the time. And I think Representative Phillips also said that earlier in the show, too. And, you know, she is she is not wrong. Sahan Journal had this fascinating, excellent piece about how they interviewed different immigrants and sons and daughters of immigrants about how they saw all of this going down. And all of them said that this is the kind of stuff that they ran away from. Their parents ran away from. So the gist of the article was that they're all disappointed to see something like this happen in our country. Yeah. Thanks so much, Sharon.